Texas is home to great food, parks, art, and some of the most beautiful and picturesque views of sprawling trees and nature. If you've gotten the opportunity to get out on a hike amongst the setting of ash junipers and cedar elms, co-star is a tree that is worthy of a leading role, the live oak. While the pecan tree may be the state tree, it's the live oak in these parts that is the most popular. The live oak is so beloved and iconic that our brand new professional soccer team has used it as their logo, symbol, and mascot. And why not? The tree is beautiful and it can be seen everywhere. In apartment complexes, in medians, in parks, as a street name in South Austin, as a street name in Hutto, and even elementary school. Wherever you look, there's a live oak. In this short video, you will learn a little bit about the characteristics history, and issues with live oaks. So, give me your attention and I promise you'll be ready to get out in nature to ID some live oaks. Here we go. Here in Central Texas, we have two specific types of live oaks. The Quercus virginiana, known as the Southern Live Oak, and the Quercus fusiformis, known by a few names, but commonly known as the Texas Live Oak. The physical characteristics of both the Southern and Texas live oaks are very similar. For starters, both are evergreen trees. Their bark is dark brown to black with deep furrows and scaly ridges. The leaves have a short petiole up to 3 8 inch in length with a rounded apex and may have a bristle tip. The upper surface of the leaf has a shiny glossy light to dark green color while the bottom of the leaf has a grayish green color. The best way to tell the difference between the Southern and Texas Live Oak is the Southern is typically a bigger tree. The Southern Live Oak varies from a shrub to a large tree of up to 80 feet, while the Texas Live Oak can reach up to 40 feet. Also, the acorns on the Southern Live Oak are a little bit bigger and fatter. However, the Texas Live Oak can produce more acorns per peduncle. The live oak is a symbol of strength. The name live oaks came from the fact that they remain green and alive throughout the winter months, while other oak trees lose their leaves. Southern live oaks were once used by shipbuilders in the 18th century to fashion the ribs and planking of tall sailing ships, such as old Ironsides. The live oak hull was so tough that the cannonballs of the British warships literally bounced off of it. Refitting that ship in the 1980s included pieces cut from live oaks in Texas that had been killed by the oak wilt fungus. And speaking of oak wilt, this is a good segue to talk about the status and care surrounding our local live oaks trees as of today. Our region has experienced massive population growth for some time now, and it doesn't appear to be slowing down. And with more people moving into the area comes the rise of new residential and commercial developments and mostly of concern, the overplanting of non-native live oaks. When you propose a new project on undeveloped land, you must adhere to the city's Unified Development Code for landscaping. And most Unified Development Code regulations require you to choose a tree from their approved tree list and that you meet the, the minimum planting requirements, such as each new single family detached home is required to have two trees. Well, if you did a quick Google search for the most planted tree in Texas, you will see the live oak is the first choice of tree and the most planted tree to plant in a new development. This means our future urban forests will lack diversity. In a 2014 study of Austin's urban forests, of its 33 million trees, the live oak made up 8.4% of all trees. Landscape requirements for new developments are great for overall aesthetics, health, and air quality of a city but a much bigger issue poses a deadly threat to live oaks that development codes cannot pick up on, and that is the spread of oak wilt. Oak wilt is an infectious lethal vascular disease caused by a fungus. The fungus lives and grows in the xylem of oaks and disables their water conducting systems. Specifically, 
Live oaks are most affected due to their tendency to grow from root sprouts, grow in large group mots, and form interconnected root systems that allow the spread of the fungus amongst other live oaks. This is why it's important to promote tree diversity and to be sure plant nurseries are identifying their stock as native to Central Texas. So, what can you do to help our live oaks and urban forests here in Central Texas? Well, one, if you are planning to plant live oaks, make sure to ask the nursery where their stock of live oaks come from. If they are unsure, reach out to a certified arborist or someone at Tree Folks to help identify your tree. Two, practice best management tree care. It is critical to avoid trimming during oak wilt season, which is between the months of February and July. Live oaks typically do a leaf exchange in late winter, so it is better to trim them in late fall or early winter. Once a live oak reaches the mature stage, it only needs to be pruned every three to five years. Again, if you have questions and are unsure, please reach out to a certified arborist. Three, and most importantly, get involved with tree folks. Tree Folks offers annual volunteer and education opportunities that will help you with becoming more aware of our urban forests. The more you get involved, the more you can ensure a healthy and green future for our trees. I am Chuck Foster, and thank you for taking time out to learn a little bit about live oaks. Take care.